Hello, Flame community. This is Jeff Kyle with the Flame Learning Channel. The Flame 2026.2 update brings us Automat, the latest machine learning addition to Flame, and it comes alongside some significant improvements to the way selectives work across the image node, action, and now GMask Tracer. In this video, we'll cover what's new with selectives and how to use Automat. We'll start out here in Batch and take a look at the image node. Starting off in the Controls tab, we have a new matte pipeline, which in terms of image processing, closely resembles the serial pipeline and is used to pass a matte through the selective, outputting it out of the matte channel of our current node. This comp dropdown gives us control over how our shape isolations, which are our input matte, our machine learning mats, or our GMask mats, combine with the Keyer and 3D AOVs, either with a blend comp, which was the only option in legacy versions of Flame, or an add or multiply blend mode. We'll go into some more detail about this in our next video when we dive into some examples. Next, we have this machine learning section, which is where we can find the new automat alongside the other four machine learning isolation options. This drop down here lets us choose which machine learning isolation we'd like to use, or if we'd like to load an ONNX mat extraction model. To use automat, I can click the button or select it from the drop down. On Linux machines, the first time it's used, it will set up a local cache, which could take a few minutes, but it only happens once per installation. On Mac, Automat is able to leverage the Neural Engine GPU for Apple Silicon machines versions 15.4 and up. After choosing Automat, it's added to the machine learning layer list, and when I hit F9 to switch to the image selective mat, I see the machine learning initializes, analyzes the image, and immediately gives me a mat of the main subject of my image here. I can add as many machine learning layers as I want and use the gear icon to reset, delete, rename, or hide each layer. We have a blend mode drop down here to control how each machine learning layer interacts with other shape isolations and each layer can be reordered by dragging them up or down. Over to the right, we have this model section with context specific options. For Automat, I have a sensitivity slider which controls contrast. Sky, for example, has no options, but the human face machine learning model has a number of face features in its model dropdown. Beneath the model section is a range section where we're able to specify an active range for any machine learning model, which is especially useful when we want to activate different machine learning layers at different times, but the default range spans the full sequence. To the right is the Region of Interest tab, allowing us to activate this yellow box here in the viewport to not only focus in the region that the model is looking at to do its processing, but using it actually significantly improves the quality of the resulting mat. Automat was trained on objects that cover the majority of the frame, so there's a good chance it'll get confused or suffer from reduced quality with smaller objects. My shot here is 4K, and if we look at the quality of the mat, especially in this area with fine lines, we can see the quality is a little noticeably low. When I turn on region of interest and bring the box over to this area, I can see a clear and significant improvement to the quality of the mat. When we're working with multiple machine learning layers and we're using multiple region of interests, we have this blending section to give us the option of adding a fall off to create a smooth gradation between them. The region of interest is key frameable, and we have this planar tracking section with some familiar planar tracking options for when we might need to use tracking to help keep our subject in the frame. Next, we have a smoothing tab which leverages motion vectors and a few different smoothing models to help the resulting mat with temporal stability. Average and weighted average lean a bit more on the motion vectors, whereas the two savitsky golay filters rely more on a smoothing algorithm to attempt to reduce notable distortion. As a small note, we have this tab here in the selective, but it's also a new node that we can use in batch if we want to run this smoothing operation on an externally generated mat. And the last tab here is post-processing, where we have some familiar mat operations to either invert the layer, adjust its threshold, shrink the mat down, dilate the mat up, or blur the mat. With all of this in mind, let's see how this fits into the new GMAS Tracer selective workflow. In the image node, the selective workflow is already set up for us, but inside of Action and now the GMask Tracer, we do have to set it up just a bit. 
I'll head into the GMAS Tracer schematic and pull out a surface the same way we would inside of Action by double clicking on it or dragging it out. Then we can open up the contextual menu on that surface and select Add Matte Selective. The pipeline is automatically set to matte and it's the only option. Just as we saw before, I can add an auto matte and my GMAS Tracer is now outputting the auto matte just like that. Automat gives us the power to create complex mats with the click of a button, and the new selective mat pipeline gives us control like we've never had before. In the next video, we'll dive into better understanding the larger selective mat pipeline and focus on some more of the specific use cases of Automat. If you like these videos and you're finding them helpful, please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel and click the bell to stay notified about new content. Feel free to comment any questions or suggestions below. Until next time, thanks a bunch for watching.